channel. If you've never been here before, welcome. My name is Rachel and I'm the owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Happy Friday. I hope you've had a great week so far and looking forward to something fun this weekend. Uh, mine's been pretty busy here at the shop, so it's been a little difficult to get a few of my things done, but I did manage to get a thrift flip done for you guys for today. Um, I actually did three projects. One of them is technically four, <laughs> so, but um, I think they all turned out really great. I'm excited to show them to you. And I have got a couple more in the kitchen that I'm working on. I just haven't been able to get those finished. And I'm hoping to have a few more for you on Tuesday. So um, the only thing is my husband and I are also definitely planning on going out on a junk run Sunday. So you might also get a thrift haul. I'm not sure which at this point, <laughs> so we'll see. But anyway, today's video is uh, a few items that I pulled out of my stash. One of them is a little antique footstool that I had gotten, uh, well, I don't know, a few weeks ago, I guess. And um, my husband really wasn't sure exactly why I even wanted to buy it. It was in pretty pitiful shape. And I'm so excited to show it to you guys. It turned out so cute. Uh, so really thrilled with that. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoy the video. And if you do, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out. And uh, I would love to hear what your favorite item is out of the ones that I completed today. So comment below and let me know. And if you haven't already, I would really love it if you would subscribe to my channel and then hit the little notification bell and that will let you know when I upload new content. I really try to stick to two Tuesdays and Fridays. I can't promise you what exactly is going to go where right now uh, with summer and all the craziness of the nursery and everything, but I will at least have something for you on Tuesdays and Fridays. Anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get to those thrift flips. My first project is this little wooden box that I found on one of my junk runs. I started by painting the inside with DIY's crinoline. And then I decided I really wanted to use decoupage paper on the front of this box, which meant I had to remove that little tab from the front. That left behind some kind of little uh, pieces of wood that were sticking out and I had to scrape those off and then use some sandpaper to get it smooth. Once that was done, I went ahead and painted the outside of the box with uh, DIY's crinoline. And once it was dry, I realized there was kind of a texture to the box that I really wasn't too fond of. So I went ahead and used some 220 grit sandpaper, sanded the whole box smooth, and then went over it again with another coat of DIY's crinoline. Once that was done and I had repainted the inside and outside, it was time to do some sealing. And for that, I am just using DIY's Big Top. It's a wonderful sealer, very durable. Uh, and of course, DIY paint requires some sort of sealant. Uh, so that's what I decided to use. Now I did go ahead and paint the front side of this box with DIY's White Swan. And then I'm using this beautiful piece of decoupage paper I had left over. And so to do that, I am putting down an even coat of liquid patina by DIY, laying my paper flat, rubbing it smooth, and then putting another coat of liquid patina over it. Really simple process and it really dresses this box up nicely. Once the liquid patina is completely dry and cured, I just took my sanding block with a little piece of 220 grit sandpaper and in a downward motion, I removed the, the excess paper. Once that was done, I liked it, but it needed a little something. So I grabbed the wooden tab that was on the front, gave it two good coats of crinoline, and then grabbed my E6000 glue and glued that little piece to the front of this box. Just kind of placed it where I needed it, tried to make it to make sure it was nice and centered. And then I just grabbed a little can that was mostly full and stuck it on there to hold that down. Once the glue was nice and dry, I decided to take a little stamp set that I have I got from Amazon some time ago and mark out the word seeds. Now I was having a heck of a time getting the letters to stick to my backing. And so I ended up, as you can see here, I actually had to erase that E. Thankfully, I had sealed this with some big top before I started stamping, so that was a little easier to do. Uh, but I ended up just going one at a time with the letters and uh, using the capital S. 
And then I did end up having to go back and re-stamp the D because it was so light. But I think this piece turned out super cute. This next project is actually four in one. I had bought at an estate sale a whole box full of frames. They all kind of matched. They were all painted white um, and they all had kind of a Victorian theme. And I decided I wanted to paint these four in particular, kind of coordinating colors, but all different. So I picked out DIY's Farm Fresh for one, Crinoline for one, Gypsy Green for one, and Cake Batter for one. So I gave each of these frames two good even coats of paint in their um, appointed color, I guess. And once that was done and they were completely dry, I went in with my damp shop towel and gave them each a really good distressing. I wanted to bring back that white base that was underneath, uh, except for the one with crinoline. For that one, I actually did use sandpaper to get down to the wood because the white underneath it really wasn't going to show through. Then it was on to sealing the paint, and for this I chose DIY's Big Top just made it very easy to do and I gave each of these one good even coat of big top and once that was done and they were drying I was moving on to what I was going to put on the inside so I grabbed this piece of fabric that I have and I took each of the backings traced them out so that I had a good uh, template and then I cut all of those pieces out with my scissors once I had a, a piece of fabric that would fit each of the picture frames, I took my uh, spray glue and used that to adhere the uh, fabric onto the backing. What I did discover is on these black backs, I needed a piece of white just because that black kind of showed through on the fabric. So I had to take the fabric off and start over, but I, once I figured it out, it was a pretty simple process after that. So I just did all of them the same, got the fabric adhered, and once that was done, I was ready to move on to the next step. So I grabbed this stamp set. This is the stamp set called Kindest Regards by IOD, and it's a beautiful stamp set. I knew I was just going to be using a portion of it, so I was only inking up the part that I knew I needed. And then you can see here I'm taking a paper towel and basically stamping off the ink just because I wanted the uh, background to be very muted and not too vibrant. So I was kind of taking off a little bit of the ink. Once that was done, I grabbed my remaining few pieces of the transfer set called Botanical Paradise by Redesign by Prima. And I began attaching a transfer to each one of the backs. I picked out the flowers that I liked and I just put them down, rubbed them down with my transfer stick. They went down very easily. Once that was done, I cleaned all the glass, put my frames all together, um, put the hardware back in and these were done. Project three is the one I really kind of refer to as a labor of love. This little stool was in such poor, poor shape when I got it. The legs were falling out. The fabric was just coming out in pieces. Um, it was dusty and dirty and grimy and gross. It just really needed some help. 
First thing I needed to do was get the, what was left of the tattered fabric off of it. So I went around and removed all the ugly old screws that were, or nails that were holding everything in place and then tucked all of that. I don't know if this is horse hair or some sort of straw, but tucked that back up and under just to have a nice clean surface to kind of work around. Here, you can just see how that fabric just comes off in pieces. It was so old. Once I had gotten all the fabric off and all the nails out, it was time to address these legs. And of course that one had to give me a little bit of a problem coming out, uh, but the other three were so loose, they would basically just fall out. Once I took them all apart, I went ahead and sanded the bottom, and then I did have to scrape away some uh, old dry glue in a couple places, use my screwdriver to just do that. Uh, and then I grabbed my wood glue and went about the process of gluing these legs back in. So just one by one, putting a little glue in the hole, putting a little glue around each uh, piece as I put it in, and then wiping away any excess that came up. Once I had them all nicely glued back in place, I took my uh, bucket of water and put that on top to hold it in place and make sure that the glue dried. Once that was done, it was on to cleaning it, getting it ready for paint. So I just used a little bit of crud cutter and followed that with some clean water. And then it was on to painting. So for this, I picked DIY's Gypsy Green, which is this really beautiful, kind of reminds me of camo green a little bit, uh, but it goes really well with the fabric that I picked and which is why I picked the color. So I gave this thing two good even coats of paint letting it dry thoroughly in between, and then I had bleed through. So <laughs> I used some general finishes, high gloss finish, and because uh, that's what I had on hand real quick and easy, I went over that with one coat of that and then repainted it with the gypsy green, and that got rid of my bleed through. So here's the fabric I'm using for this, and as you can see, it has that beautiful green color in it, so I thought the gypsy green went really well. So I cut out my piece, laid it on top, and began the process of stapling it down. So the first thing I did was put uh, four corners. Basically, I put one uh, staple in, went straight across from it, pulled the fabric tight, and put another one in, and then did that on the other two sides, um, and then just went around the circle, stapling as I went. I was really trying not to get too many pleats in the fabric. There are a couple, but not, not an overload, which was nice. Once I had it all stapled in, I took my scissors and went around and very carefully cut off the excess. And then I went about starting the distressing process. I used sandpaper on the top because I had used that general finishes uh, gloss and I couldn't just wet distress it. But I did wet distress the legs really well. I just wanted this to have a very aged appearance since it is an antique. Once that was done and it was dry again, I went over the entire thing with one good even coat of DIY's Big Top to seal the paint. Plus that gives it a really nice durable finish. Uh, and the thing I like about Big Top is it doesn't have a really shiny sheen when it's done. Once that was done, I was ready to move on to the next step which was putting some of this little ribbon around where the staples were. And of course I went to my local fabric store, could not find it in a cream color, so I had to buy gold. And I was kind of not very happy about that. So I thought, you know, I'll just paint it. So I did, I used DIY's crinoline. I uh, painted it with one good even coat of paint. I used uh, DIY's big top to seal it and then it was ready to go on. So I'm just using my hot glue gun and very carefully going around this piece, gluing a little bit at a time, and then pushing it in with my thumbs to make sure I have a really good seal. And then this little footstool is done.
you liked it. And uh, please remember to comment below and let me know which of the projects your favorite was. Uh, I always love hearing from you guys. And again, if you haven't already, it helps me out greatly if you would think about subscribing to my channel. And then if you hit the little notification bell, that will let you know when I upload a new video. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you all. And I look forward to seeing you back here on Tuesday. Have a great weekend and we'll see you then. Bye. Thank you.